APIs have been around for a long time, and most web developers rely on them heavily. But for data professionals, especially those of us who have always had full access to our databases, running into a data integration that requires an API request can be a bit confusing. So let's take a look at the common API types you may come across and how to work with them. Application Programming Interface, or APIs, have been around since the beginning of computing. But when talked about today, people generally mean web APIs, developed around 2000 to allow programs to interact using HTTP protocol. They are essential to the functionality of e-commerce, web forms, sites that aggregate across many sites, and many other use cases. But the common analytics uses are usually data integration between company tools such as Salesforce and Workday, which require connecting through their APIs or collecting data from external sources such as Google Analytics or Twitter to compile and generate insights and reports. One of the common types of APIs you'll likely run into is the Simple Object Access Protocol, or SOAP API. They rely entirely on XML to transfer information, which can get complex depending on programming language. SOAP is not tolerant to errors, so building a request manually can be time consuming, though some languages can reference a Web Services Description Language, or WSDL file, which can map out the request definition. For most data professionals, we are not experienced in languages like .NET that interface well with SOAP. So if the tools we choose do not have built-in connectors, it can be a significant job to custom build a request to a SOAP API to send or retrieve data. The other common type is the representational state transfer, also called the REST or RESTful API. This is a more modern approach that tries to make up for some of the shortcomings of SOAP, meant to be a lightweight alternative. Instead of XML, REST usually relies on a URL. It uses the simple commands get, post, put, and delete to direct the API to what task is being performed. For instance, we may go to a URL with a get API, put in a customer key, and then it will return a response with the data. The response can be obtained in CSV, JSON, RSS, or XML, giving more options to make it easier on developers. Some APIs are completely public. Anyone can type in the URL and get a response. Others may use an API key, which will return public data, but lets the provider know who requested the information. This can limit the amount of requests being made for security or commercial reasons. To access private resources, such as your private YouTube account information, an OAuth access token can be used to access private data. Many of our data integration and reporting tools have built-in connectors to make API requests easier. But it's important to understand the fundamentals for when we don't have built-in connections. Practice using API testing tools such as Postman on public APIs. So when a problem comes along, you are comfortable troubleshooting the request and parsing the response. Thanks for watching. If you enjoyed this video or learned something, a thumbs up would be really appreciated. Stick around for more data content by subscribing to the channel or clicking a video on screen. See you in the next one.